the uh, standards for this particular group under the uh, United Washington DW Mining, which is a part of the Empire Washington DW Mining, an indigenous organization in North America. Historical synopsis on Washita Nation of Moors. CO United Washita Vida Mind. Peru, Mexico, Isabella, now Cuba, USA, Canada, and Alaska are European inventions which comprise the land of the cultured Moors. The descendants from the ancient Moorish nation, the Washita. Fathers, the mothers and fathers of civilization began on the great island empire of Mu, some people call the Mori. When about 8,000 years ago, a natural catastrophe overwhelmed that ancient motherland, some to its survivors made their way to what has since become known as North Central and South of Mexico, America. The ancient ones have been in this area 6,000 years before the coming of Christ. This sovereign nation was an independent homeland established centuries before the arrival of the 16th century Europeans. What our forefathers were before this land of ours, namely Mu of Mexico, was a remaining part of Lemuria was named North, Central, and South America. We are that today, without a doubt, our contribution, namely <coughs> Washington. The name is derived from the so-called Arabian Desert, which was once named Oliver. 20th, 14th century BC. This is some of the history uh, on the historical synopsis of the Washington Nation. We start with one. This is dealing with wars. What wars were fought in the interest of Washington? One, the so called Barbary Triplet. Tripolitan Wars, 1803-1850, the Napoleonic Caribbean Wars, 1804, the War of 1812 against the British, and the so-called Seminole War. All of these were wars that connect back to the Washington Empire. Another group of this same were uh, name some of the treaties that were enacted by most important for the Washington, the Transcontinental Treaty, otherwise known as the Adamus Honest Treaty of 1819, taking control from the Spanish deportment uh, unit. The Floridas, the whole of Louisiana, and the Pacific Northwest, later called Oregon country. Three, the so-called French and Indian War, 1754-1763, against the British marks a point in the history of the Empire Washington de Deputy Who was the Imperial Empress at that time was Aya Maria. So that was the name of this particular place. This particular Empress reigned 41 years from 1754 to 1795. One of her daughters from the royal line was Anna Maria. So one was called uh, I.E. Maria, and the other one's name was From this union came uh, the Turner family. Henry Joseph Turner passed on in 1844. What was Henry Turner acknowledged by the U.S. Supreme Court as what? Heir to the De Bourbon estate on June 19, 1848. What is the Bourbon Estate? The Imperial International Estate of the Bourbon Habsburg Empire, which includes Western Europe, 
the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Germany, Italy, Sicily, Naples, Sardinia, Spain, and Portugal, as well as most of North America and the Caribbean, in addition to Central and South America. And through his uh, Washita wife, Anna Marie, all of the North America west of the imperial demarcation line. 1713 or British Royal Proclamation Line, 1763. Uh, question, how did Henry Turner receive the international estate via Spanish land grant in accordance with the U.S. Supreme Court decision of June 19, 1848? You see, what we have is proof of everything I'm reading. So right after I read some of this, I hope I'm not boring. I'm going to go over some other documents and then I'll pass around some material <coughs> so that you know just what you're getting yourself into <coughs> and the different connections that we have. We have international connections with people from all of these different countries. We had a man that was assassinated down the street while I was up in Atlanta uh, back in, I guess, the 90s uh, from Switzerland. That was a part of the Washington Empire. Is that why he got assassinated? Yeah, he was one of our financiers. So he was assassinated to keep that money from the world. Because he was helping with different uh, projects with the Empress. Um, how did Henry Turner receive international state via Spanish land grant in accordance with the U.S. Supreme Court decision of June 19, 1848? What does via mean? By way of or pass through, so that you understand what via means. Because uh, I have an ID card. Well, we'll pass this stuff around too, so that you can see how we did this then. Where now, some of this we will do a lot differently. But uh, most of these words and different things and instructions will be passed around so that you'll know what you're dealing with. We only have a couple visitors in there, so the visitors just get a chance to, to view this view. Who did Henry Turner Sr. man, Sarah, and out of the union care who? Henry Turner Jr. and George W. Eliza. What relation is Eliza to Prophet Norman Durali? Okay, now this is going into something I don't deal with too much, but I'll go over it. Who is uh, Lulia to the Imperial Empress? Uh, Aya Maria, her second daughter. Who is Lulia's daughter? My hero. So all of this is dealing with uh, some people who are connected to uh, the Empress through her family. Her family goes on and on and on and on. And on, and on, but I'll go over it. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Mahalia. Received the Imperial Washington Crown throne during the same time Henry Jr. assumes the de Bourbon Habsburg Imperial Crown. Now, in the essence of this, they didn't receive necessarily crowns, but they were given titles through. Uh, their connections to these to these groups. Not necessarily recognized at that time by those families, but recognized in the court system, which we'll show. Because uh, to say it like they were recognized is not true. They were recognized amongst themselves and in the court system. Um, who is Empress Mary Tierra, Washington, Tunica, Ghost, and Elbe? She is the Empress President of the Empire Watchtower D. W. Mike. See, the people that put this together put president. We don't have a president, so that's they're, you know, putting in things that don't really have any bearing. Um, when was she born in nineteen twenty seven? Who crowned Empress Verdias and Tierra? Her name was Delphia Kim Bag. Uh, who is His Excellency? None of this applies to nothing, so because uh, it doesn't matter. So I'm skipping all this down to what is Ben York to Anna Maria, half brother? 
and then uh, I'm going beyond this because half of that doesn't make any difference, you know. Because all of these different ambassadors, that's not important. And you can read it if you want to. You got the point on, on most of this? Because I just passed this around. Some of this will be used, a lot of this will not. Because most of this is something that one of the members of the Washita Nation wanted to push. And so a lot of it can be used, it's good, a lot of it, I don't agree. And uh, what about the parts in which they refer to on the memorial movement? Okay, those different points are things that can be used. Things that can't be used is not necessary who is the ambassador because that's a job, a position that's changing. The only seats that aren't changeable are permanent seats like uh, uh, the raw seats, whoever these chiefs are, that's permanent. So in the permanence, understand that uh, what we put together be listed just like this is listed from the way we put it out. It's already out there on many levels, which you'll find out today. On March 20th in the year 2003, this treaty of peace and friendship between Mount Arafat Embassy, the Yamasee Native Americans, original Cherokee, the Seminole Creek Shoshone, Washita Mound Builders connected to Ben York's group that we just read about, the Egyptian Church of Karas, which is pronounced Christ, and the United Washita D. W. Mining enter into a unanimous treaty to assist each other and to establish unity in matters of commerce and state. The Yamasee Native Americans, original Cherokee, Seminole, Creek, Shoshone, and so on, um, remain sovereign entities in their own right. The United Washita D. W. Mining shall remain sovereign entities in their own right. Chiefs and dignitaries present at time of all declaration between the above parties are from Mount Arafat Embassy, Renee B. Sanders Hill, Grand Matron, Dr. Derek H. Sanders Hill, Counselor and Grand Master, Nanya Hyde Keith Hill, and a Moon Hill. From the United Washington D.W. Monument, Prince Ramesses Bay, Taida Eel, Principal Chief, Zachary Eel, Principal Chief, Maluk Eel, Principal Chief, Shahi Dubois, Principal Chief, Davina Pierce Eel, Principal Chief. Those were the people that were present during this time when this was uh, done. One, two, six. And Louise, uh, which is the youngest Principal Chief, was not present, but she was there. This is a uh, United Washington D. Dr. Monty, United Nations number 21593, Post Office Box 16866, Atlanta, Georgia, Republic, Zimp 30321, non domestic. So that's how we uh, list our mail and everything right now. Uh, greetings and salutations. We come in prayer asking for permission of the Most High to speak. This prayer is made coming from before Her Highness with love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. We come giving reverence and honor for her lifelong efforts to reclaim our stolen lands as well as correcting and restoring our history. Long live Her Highness, Empress Mary Isaacosa and Alfa. We give full recognition for our contributions, achievements, so on and so on and so on. Uh, the great women who have sacrificed their love, such as A Maria, Yawida, Manya, Washita, Harriet Tubman, Sergeant, uh, Sergeant of Truth, and Mary, Mother of Jesus and Esther. We give honor to these particular ones by saying, e -hi -te, e -hi. Uh, Ishis is another term for the Jaguar system of magic, which deals with uh, just mentioning that that Jaguar has the power of the unseen. It can, it can whittle in between the different chambers we call dimensions. 
On this sixth day of June in the year 2003, we proclaim Declaration of United Washington Judge Mind. This was made and sent to the Empress uh, via um, co CO Minister of Education, Dr. Anderson, Post Office Box 4277, Inglewood, California, 90309 4277. It has that stamp on the 14th of May 2003 and the number of the stamp of that state in Englewood that they received this. On this day, Prince, I, Prince Ramesses, Abel Bay, humbly take hold of the reins of peace, love, and justice by declaration of right of royalty to the indigenous right, having been named royal by Her Highness, Empress Brady Austin, Ghost, Tierra, Washita, Turner, El Bay. When given the name, gift of name, title, Prince, I do hereby declare an empire and state addition. They put Empire State Edition, which is wrong. If this state is not accepted by the Empress, then I, along with the primary chief, declare United Washington Deductive Mind a, a, a state as an indigenous aboriginal claiming the right of self-determination as stated by 1933 Human Rights Act of UN Laws, C Resolution 1514, Article 15, uh, Article 1. So everything that I'm doing and the method of what we did was done according to human rights laws, which I will go over after uh, I read this. Our purpose is to reestablish our indigenous rights by observing and proclaiming our human rights as part of the Human Rights Act law, as observed by the United Nations towards Aboriginal people. I establish this royal chair as observer, coordinator, counselor, with treatment established by Aboriginal Royal Societies worldwide. My intention is to declare the installation of a governing body of 12 primary chiefs, Prince Ramses Bay, Nina Atawida Hill, Nanya Zakara Hill, Louise Dubois, Shahid Dubois, Nin Davina Hill, Nanya Maluk Hill, Nanya Ishmael Hill, and White Bay, etc. to be announced whose purpose is to create, enforce, act, laws, schools, practices, archives, treaties, ecology, anthropology, agricultural pursuits, etc., etc. The pursuit of Aboriginal law of bylaws of the universal 12 planets and one sun. These seats for life as United Washington, Prince Principal and Principal Secondary Chiefs. The Washita have a constitution, so we must act on it by reclaiming our rights given by the Most High as stated in the first law of Human Rights Act ratification, whereby we are able to declare unto the four winds, four stations, and the five elements that we will now be giving this proclamation to all indigenous Aboriginal people. These seats, most importantly, are primarily for the perpetuation of our way of life, culture, and posterity. We nationals of the empire, Washington, D. W. Monument, are part of an empire, an empire as states within its empire. This day, we declare that state of being and assemblage as United Washington, D. W. Monument. Since we have not heard from the heads of the Washington Empire, and their rule has dwindled since Her Highness is in been in a captivated state. Through the United Washington Dita of Demania, Her Highness Empress Brady Asitiera Washington Turner Ghost in El Bay will now rise to the power of our great mothers and fathers. We now humbly take these reins of Aboriginal proclamation. Our reestablishment is for the prevention of genocide against our indigenous people. We pray your blessing, and then it's been signed. Mine was co-signed because I was here. Mount Arafat Embassy of the Egyptian Church of Karas, Christ, Yamasee Native Americans, Original Cherokee, Seminole Creek, Shoshone, Washita, Mount Phillips. To the family members of the Egyptian Church of Christ, Ahai Te, Ish, from Dr. Derek H. Sanders Hill, Latif, parentheses, Mount Arafat Embassy of the Egyptian Church of Karas, 
C O I S M R S, Post Office Box 1689, Post Lake, Georgia, Postal Zone 372. In February 2003, I wrote a letter to Pops on Mount Arafat, Holy Tabernacle. Pops is short for Dr. Uh, Malachi Zadok Yard. I'll start again. In February 2003, I wrote a letter to Pops on Mount Arafat, Holy Tabernacle, letterhead. In March 2003, I received a letter from Pops advising me to discontinue the use of the name Holy Tabernacle in our name. Mount Arafat Holy Tabernacle, and to begin to use the title Egyptian Church of Christ. Christ, I have complied with this advice, as I do not wish to be viewed as a do-your-own-thing newest group. We are now renamed Mount Arafat Embassy of the Egyptian Church of Korach. Christ, we remain Yamasee Native Americans, original Cherokee. Seminole Creek, Shoshone, Washita Mound Builders, and are evolved in some very involved, evolved in some very intricate indigenous matters. FYI, I have enclosed a copy of the materials we are using in our endeavors towards these ends. I remain ever loyal to Dr. York and his most honorable contacts from our most holy land of Tamil Ray, a high age. Mount Arafat is one with the family. I'm sure that our efforts will be beneficial to the entire family. We are Yamasee and Yamasee are Washington Mountains. We are internationally recognized by UN ID number 215-1993. Until our national petition as Yamasee Native American Boys is complete from Mount Arafat Embassy, we will use the imperial number of the Washita Mountains as we are Washita Mountains. This is in compliance with the Constitution of the Yamasee Native Americans, the Declaration of Independence of the Yamasee Native Americans, and the Declaration of the Washita DW Mind. The Washita Empire. Pops has advised me to and to remind all others to relocate to Macon. Mount Arafat is hard on the job. We are moving to Macon very soon. I will keep you informed of our movements and progress. I remain your brother in mission, AIP. Dr. Derek H. Sadness Hill, in the language of uh, the lobby, uh, Dr. Malachi Zada York Hill, 33 degrees west. Uh, W.M. So, uh, Worshipful Master. Okay, this is Mount Arafat Embassy, Egyptian Church of Koresh, and what it does is this is a letter that they sent to the Empress, which uh, I will uh, give you all to view. Washita Nation of Mars, a historical synopsis, table confidence, and induction. Imperial Empire, Washita Nation diversity of citizenship, jurisdiction, federal preemption doctrine, executive and congressional plenary powers, political question, and so on and so on. What I'm going to do is go to the uh, federal preemption doctrine and then pass it. Okay, but it's in here, so I'll pass this around. This is the Constitution that uh, the United Watchdog of the Mind you go by. This is the United Nations Economic and Social Council, District General, ECN, Fourth Subdivision. Uh, second, uh, this is the 1993, the 29th, or next of the uh, 23rd of August, 1993, original English, GE 95-85003, parenthesis E, Commission on Human Rights, Subcommission on Prevention of Discrimination and Protection of Minorities, 45th Session, Agenda Item 14. 
discrimination against indigenous peoples. Report of Working Group on Indigenous Populations on its 11th session. Chairperson Rapporteur, Rapporteur Miss Erica Irene A. Diaz. She's from Cuba. And this has the draft declarations and the law. I'm going to read one of them. <clears throat> Article 5. Every indigenous individual has a right to a nationality. That's it. I'm going to pass this away. So everyone can read this. United Nations Economic Social Council District General, ECN 4 Subdivision 2 AC.4, 1999, Info 230, July 1999, English, French, Spanish only, Commission on Human Rights Subcommission on Prevention of Discrimination, final list of attendance, G99-14227. And uh, it has a list of everyone here. Uh, Washita D. W. Manya. Pretty awesome, Tiara Washita kind of goes down. They they put Mister down here. They got it messed it up. Then the people that was there, Paul Miles, J uh, John, Milton Brown the third, and his wife Mary Kay. Brown. Milton Brown is a former federal agent, and he works uh, for us at That can be passed around. Okay, if you have any questions to uh, any of this, this is a good time for those questions. I'll pass also around some documentation uh, on myself. Definitely want this back quickly. Uh, with the uh, things given by the Empress. Uh, questions and what you can do as a chief and un in understanding the duties of, of that particular office. This is the United Washita D. Dr. Manya's uh, seal, which is quasi coral, the phoenix coming out of. Uh, I'm getting tired. Uh, fire. For lack of a better word. This is. Uh, the certificate of live birth. This is a copy of, of the one that you have. My old ID badge when I worked security. This is the front part of it. And two stubs, uh, claim stubs from when I was traveling. At one point, we were asked to turn in all of our identification. And this was used to give, to uh, serve them with notice. You could say that uh, they didn't have the power to do such. Uh, because none of them had been in office long enough. And this was the proof of it because I was one of the few Washita along with the Empress and those that actually lived that life and carried that identification as our way of life, and even in our travel. So we're uh, been on federal list as uh, non-compromised uh, aliens and as indigenous. And I was listed then as a security person and you know, stuff like that.
back in the 90s, we, the Empress had put together a plan on monies being allocated by the IMF and the, uh, 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 the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. And so we qualify for such. That's the purpose of having uh, uh, primary chiefs and secondary chiefs. The purpose is to have put together a form of government under the Royalty Act and dealing with indigenous people so that we can reapply for the same types of finance that the Empress was applying for at that period of time. This is a, one of the few copies left of that. This was what was sent to uh, the United Nations. So this gives you some understanding of what we were dealing with, how we put together the provinces of the Washita state by state. And I think that's enough to begin with. How about you? Well, if you do, say something. You know, you can, anybody want to speak, can speak. They have something to say. In, uh, my relationship to the, to the Monta, I guess, in, in the future. Once we do set up, whatever we're going to set up with Monta, they will also be part of the listed in part as a. So once we have a treaty, I have to get a treaty with you. That was one, part of my, uh, I would say, purpose, because I always have a hidden purpose. And my hidden purpose was this would give us more power as United Washington. At the same time, it's a good political move because it gives you power. Within the Montauk, as a chief, you coming in as a chief from another group that's recognized you that has more power than them anyway, because we're indigenous and they're tribal. Being they up under government scrutiny, period, and we're up under government scrutiny from uh, we they have to assist us according to the uh, bylaws that you're reading, uh, dealing with the uh, UN. If they don't, and then they did attack us or something like that again. We can hold that against them in the world court, which is who we address it to. And uh, they get in trouble with the IMF, which they all put money into those kitties so that they can have methods of attempting to control the public. And that's the purpose of that. But at the same time, those people that qualify for these finances, which we'll apply for it, but we're not basing ourselves around it because those people that base themselves on this stuff get entrapped by it. And I'm not interested in being entrapped. I don't know about you, uh, as you learn more about how this really goes. Because by becoming a chief, you have voting power. And the voting power that you get is one vote per chief. I have an override vote on that. right now because of the power of the principal seat and dealing with the uh, the uh, the other 12 which I have 12 now uh, primary uh, chiefs with that seat and I was hoping to put a queen in there which would give me uh, three more votes override because the queen has three votes over the the uh, prince, according to the way this is established, because each house uh, would establish their particular uh, group or nation under the laws and bylaws that they see fit. So when you say you want to put a queen in there, I said uh, at some point. It's, it's not a play thing, so I can't put anybody. Right. You mean what? You mean queen? You mean like? Uh, actual. You mean a queen that's already a queen in Wichita? No, oh. she becomes that. I mean, oh, like your queen? I put in there, I yeah. put me, yeah. So then you do know you need to talk to us about that. Yeah. Because you would want the queen, that you, in other words, when you say queen, you mean a queen that's representative of what you represent and can represent us. Oh, without doubt. Cool. Yeah. But at the same time in that, your personal affairs are your own as long as they don't affect the rest of them. Right. So it's not like we control your life. Um, 
you know, you can't go out if you're a chief sitting up there with a big old pipe of reaper and some cocaine and, you know, you know, uh, not here, not with no cocaine, no. unless you're at a ritual or something. And we don't use cocaine like that in rituals. Now, we have shamans that I know the different uses myself, and there are shamans that show you what some of our societies use. I choose not to use none of it anymore, but that's a personal thing. And in our societies, they do smoke hemp, and they use it in teas. This is used as a medicinal way of reaching. Uh, they use that peyote. Uh, as a medicinal way of reaching the inner spirit. They smoke it for that reason because the Empress had made uh, marijuana was our chief plant for a long time. You know, that's why they were looking at us now, funny. You know, but in here, our primary focus will be on the development. And if, and if you don't agree, you can, uh, you know, change some of this, those people that were brought into that level of understanding at the chiefs. Because this meeting will map out what their chiefs of and what their duties were to this day for. You know. Okay, well, all right. You said your chief, you're a queen. Get more, you, she just gets, maybe a, I didn't hear that she gets an override vote. Over you. Over me. Meaning, I get two votes. Mm -hmm. Meaning, I vote one, two. Mm -hmm. You vote one. Mm -hmm. She would get one, two, three. So, you know, I, it'd have to be a sensible person. I'm not going to get no bias. Just so, is that saying that your queen could veto, like, say, for instance, revoke oh, or something? Yeah. And your queen could I can do that, but that gives me real amount of power as far as five votes. Mm -hmm. So that means if I have uh, 12 uh, secondary chiefs mm -hmm. and out of those 12, six of them decide to go on another level mm -hmm. and we decide we want to do something else, then we can override them just with my vote and hers and just one or two other chiefs. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the way to with the way the power was distributed, you know, distributed. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about power. You know. The things that are going to be coming up will be dealing with a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of money and a lot of issues around your life. And so uh, we have to really take our time figure out what we really want in making this move. The first thing you have to do is ask yourself, do you really want to get into something like this? Because this takes up a lot of time. It's a lot of uh, research that's been done, but what has to happen now is this stuff has to be sought through and find out what we can use. Because some of this stuff I passed, you definitely use. Some of it we definitely can. These are the original prince and princesses that I served under when I came in and maps showing how this was uh, drawn up. So in other words, we've lived like this for periods of time. And going this particular route, you've been invited into something like a corporation at the top of it. So what you have to do is decide whether you're ready to take that type of uh, responsibility on yourself. And understand that's a responsibility. And anything that's offered to you as permanence would, uh, should catch your goat. Because anything that's permanent means they expect you to act like it's permanent. You know? In other words, don't take your life for granted. Once you give your yay or nay on it, it's taken literally as that. Because when I did this, my life was put on the line. And I've had people try to hurt me since this has happened, before it got this far. So it's a serious <coughs> type of response. Place. So the main reason that the people would want to do you harm is 
for it to stop you from promoting indigenous people? Not just that. For power. Because somebody paid them. And to uh, slow down the movement. Movement can't be stopped now. We, we, it's, you got so many groups out here saying they this indigenous and that indigenous. And I'm Tucson's little cousin and Leroy Jones' uncle and I'm uh, uh, the head of the Masons' cousin. Uh, I was there with Tommy Brown. You know, whatever you could think of, somebody's out there doing it. But what we have is we have cornered an original market. It's like uh, you reached the head of the Dow, and now you've reached the people that can control the Dow. When you at that level, coming in, now what you have to do is figure out, along with the rest of us, how to make this work, and at the same time, don't get engulfed in it by the things that'll come up soon as the finances start. And the biggest thing that I've seen, because I've seen the money before, and I remember what happened last time, was the people that were in at the top get a little greedy, some of them, and then some of them will uh, get caught up in who they are. You know, like an empress used to demand same thing. And when she spoke, she didn't want nothing. I, I didn't want to do it just like that because I felt it would be too much uh, stress on the people, but at the same time, we have to remember who we are in these different seats and carry it accordingly. Otherwise, we have no order, we just have some foolishness. And that's what was discussed with the primary chiefs, and that's what's being discussed with you now. So the level of protocol starts at the royal seat comes down through the chiefs and then through the general membership. General membership will be accepted through application. Even yours will be dealt with the same way. And in that application, we have a, a small fee. It's a $10 uh, fee for this. The processing of this, though, instead of doing what we went through, uh, some of us had to pay 500 what was it? Do you remember 550 or something like that to become uh, registered as Washington with the UN? And uh, part of the raid on the land down there occurred because some of the Washington didn't receive their paperwork, so they called the FBI, according to what the FBI told me, and issued, you know, uh, that they had regrets fooling with the Washtenaw because they did not receive what they paid for, meaning they did not receive their paperwork or anything else. And then some of them had put in for this or that, the licenses to drive and all this, and it didn't work uh, appropriately for them. As you can see with me, certain things work, but my identification looked entirely different from theirs. You know. Uh, there was a lot of stipulations that were different. I had mine drawn up uh, myself, and I got it approved. Theirs was drawn up by whoever was doing it at that time in administration. By the time they changed it, we had been raided. Uh, the paperwork was uh, being held up by the FTI, and the customs and all that. That went on for a couple years, and then it was released to uh, Joe and them. Our stuff, we were never really bothered because uh, my end was security at that time. By me being security, I was doing to them what they were doing to us, investigating them. So what we did was we just flipped it back on them. And since they were found one, uh, none of us ended up in jail. The Empress did get locked up because somebody had a joint in the car. It just happened to have a joint in and then she ended up going to jail. She got out of jail. Uh, something else happened, and then she ended up in an old folks' home, and somebody jumped on her because she said she was an empress. And if you heard about somebody telling you they was an empress or an empire and all that, you look at them like, you, you cleaning their bedpan. You the empress, huh? So you know what happened there. And when people first hear about this stuff, they take this stuff like, this good to you real, but people that have been around and read a little bit know that this is the 
this is a real thing. Uh, what you're coming into is, is definitely real. And um, where we go from now depends mainly on what we do as a group. I myself, when one group doesn't uh, uh, make it, I'm going to pull up another one. That's what I told the group up in Atlanta. You know, got some people that are politically inclined, in tune, have traveled internationally, have been over here. I've never been. I usually was keeping the house and the property because she trusted me at the time to do that job. I go in her stuff or read her papers or none of that. I just did by basically my job. So she would take the rest of them with her that had been there long enough. And one of them is the primary chief. In fact, two of them are primary chiefs. Louise is the youngest chief. She's 15 years old. She's been around the Empress, kind of came up like that. And she's been to the United Nations and dealing with the issues around human rights. So my idea was to bring in one child that could be totally groomed in this from that age. Because if you have children and they come up in this, then they come into the bloodlines that are being recreated right now, which was another part of my purpose. But that's my shadowy purpose, which wasn't written on. But it's being mentioned right now because that's a fact. And that's what you're offered to get a chance to, as they say, live forever. Some people write history. Some people will read history. You'll be history. You know, some of us are in a couple books. I'm in a couple of them. One book they call me L. Rukin. And in another book they call me a couple other things. You know, but those books are already out. Then they got stuff that they're writing about us right now, and stuff that happened down there. And the stuff that we put out, because I want to put out a couple things about what occurred down there that hasn't been in any book. So uh, that's what I have to say on this. Uh, if you have any questions, bring them forward. But the main thing is that I want to know and get before you leave is what you can do as a chief in the Washita, except for the people that already know who they are in this. And, um, uh, you know, put that with your application so that we can go over it and make this thing work a little sweeter. Because the main thing we need is uh, administrative staff that has enough training and enough room to go before heads of state, city, and so on, with whatever premise we're coming out with. Be it a school for children, or my main primary projects, which are dealing with agriculture, and keeping our ways. The best way to keep our ways is to have our own museum. And the only way to keep a museum going is to have our own agri uh, archaeological digs. So we have to have people that are versed in anthropology ourselves. By us being indigenous, we would be the best anthropologists because we are those people from yesterday. Now, as soon as you sign that, as soon as you say you are, you are that. So it's your responsibility to know who you are and to have understandings of history that go beyond stuff like the Celestine prophecy and stuff like that. You want to get deep in it. You want to have understandings that would take you into like the international decade in detail. These are the maps. Did I pass these around before? Okay, well this is the international decade. This is from 1995 to 2004. This is dealing with the permanent committee that's working on this. I want to get somebody in this permanent committee. <coughs> so we're working on that. We're also working on our own identification number separate from the emphasis number. And Dr. Yard's people are doing the same and several other groups that I'm not dealing with. We have another treaty with uh, 
Muslim mosque incorporated, which is up under the auspices of Imam Jamil uh, in Atlanta. We have another uh, treaty with uh, Rainbow Shamans Incorporated, Iroquois. Uh, Tammy Walker Stick Riley, Ate Riley, and Pelecchio Riley, the father. Uh, in that, uh, we also have, uh, I have to look them up, because this is a family don't get along. His sister, which is uh, Crooked Arrow, down in uh, Flagstaff, Arizona, all of this is one family connected to the Air Coordination, which is the oldest, this particular group of one of the oldest groups of shamanic uh, uh, practitioners in that, uh, in that nation that's still around. We have connections with uh, the Apaches through uh, Geronimo's granddaughter and also uh, Chief Joseph, for lack of a better name, whose name is Roland Thunder, his grandfather. So we have people like that. There's another young lady down in Oklahoma. She's working on the uh, they're part of uh, the Iroquois consider themselves Washita, and so they accepted us. Andrea, I can't think of her other name, is with the Kiowas down in Oklahoma. So I just talked to her the other day. So we've got people in different places. we got some people on the Hopi uh, reservation. I can't think of their names. But we'll be compiling all of those different ones and getting the connection. Uh, the ones on the Hopi are cheap. <coughs> One thing I want to do here is uh, continue to unify these different uh, indigenous groups through their leadership so that we'll be able to have a greater voice in the United Nations so that when we do go, because we have people here that might want to go there, so we have to come up with methods to raise money to send our people because they're not going to give it to us right off. The Empress never received a quarter from them, so what would happen is our people would have to come up with most of themselves. What we would do is devise methods to take care of ourselves and then from those methods put forward like that. One way is the pearl is always in the fish's mouth so we can always ask and it can be given. According to the ratifications, if you read them and the laws under them, <coughs> we don't have a lot of limitations as indigenous people. Our limitations come from not knowing what our limitations are. And by us not having a lot of them, we need to utilize as much as we can in what you read. And you need to read that, get copies of that, you know, as soon as possible, because that's a tool that will be used a lot. Of. Uh, we need to know what an indigenous person is. If I ask you right now what an indigenous person is, Ron, what would you tell me? I'll tell you that. Okay. A what? A what? Of this land. That's good. Well, see, I'm glad you said that because I'm not sure I would have known the, the proper answer. I would think, I would think I would have said somebody that was born here. No, That's a good answer. A good answer. Because it doesn't have to be Aboriginal. As long as the person understands that this person originated in North or South America. Because that's what it's about. We have people that's Washita that I know are from Peru. Because I used to sit down with them every day and they were, you know, uh, you know, just kicking the breeze with God and speaking. <coughs> we have people in Mexico that are Washington. So once we really start moving, we have Hawaiians that we have treaties with. That 
my plan would be to intermarry with some of those families, even with the Zapatas down there, because they got a lot of political power. That would be a good move. Therefore, that push you in with some people that could afford to help you with things like, let's say we want to get into oranges, we want to get into grapes, we want to learn these different things and deal with them. That's if we want to do that. That's one level, because these people are already doing it. So those are different aspects. But these people are fighting wars, too, as well. You know, those particular ones fought their way into a Fox's government. And Fox brought them in, like I think, the year before last. I guess the U.S. is uh, approved. But now the U.S. and all them are kissing and hugging. You know, that's the way it goes, too. They look like they fight. You know, you know what you're doing? You last. You don't take their money. You last. If you don't get up there and start selling their drugs, you last. If you don't get caught up in half of the games they play, selling uh, passports, uh, paper, bonds, you last. Because uh, as we go on, we'll get uh, what's considered diplomatic immunity. I used to have something close to that when I was doing security, but it didn't bother me much. And when we were traveling before they changed these laws, they weren't bothering us. But then after they changed the laws, before they changed the laws, Joe took away the privileges of one of the security people. See, when he tried to do it with me, I refused him and sent them a copy of my IDs. But with this guy, the FBI stopped his passport because they said to stop. With the move that I made, they can't do it, nothing. And once they received the, uh, the notice, did you see that? The papers where they sent, we sent them notice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you saw that. Well, that gives proof that they were served a notice of concerning the United Washington and know what we're doing. So the FBI got that when they got it. So basically, they have an office set up in this guy's house that's over the, the, the Watchtower Empire. And indirectly, the, the Empress is, you know, under uh, their scrutiny because she's in an old folks home probably. They fit. And so we're working on getting out of there. Hopefully they pull off something soon. If they don't, then we will. The avenues I'm looking at are fundraisers through uh, bands, because I got with uh, something after midnight. We used to play with Gil Scott Heron. We got them, because that's my godfather's people out there. Then I'm hoping we can get Aaron Nevels, because all of them are Washington. So all we have to do is just kind of press them a little bit, and I'm sure they'll help us out. We just have to reach them, you know. So uh, that's one level of one way. Another way is through, uh, we put together some kind of little can and put it out. Then we do the thing around the mounds but strictly dealing with this. The other stuff dealing with the cosmic ray order is simply dealing with that. It has nothing to do with this. So if you want to ever include that, you can. Okay, go ahead. All right. What's the duties of the primary chiefs and positions in which day the primary chiefs hold as far as like chief of what? Transportation chief or um, finance chief? What? Okay, right now what we have going up there is we have um, the human resources, the things affecting government are being dealt with by Zach Chief Zachar and Chief um, uh, Shahid Dubois and Chief White Bay. But right now, they've been missing each other. This deals in with everything from welfare, meaning uh, burying people who can't bury themselves, mm -hmm. to uh, the centralized form of government, the things uh, going over here and uh, pursuing the number. 
they are dealing with that. The establishment of the banking system, they're dealing with that. Chief Tahita is dealing with that through Shahid, because Shahid put together a, a billion dollar, a two million dollar contract for uh, seven nine. Uh, and that's when they locked him up on RICO charges. And uh, we, we beat that. So they're dealing with that part of, of, of it. Uh, upholding the laws, which the laws are all the laws that you read under the Human Rights Act. Learning and rediscovering the rituals. That's basically what's going on with them. And that's what their seats are doing. And what, what I would hope this job is for some of the chiefs here. Okay, the secondary chiefs will have a similar job to the primary, except they will make sure that the primary are doing their job. So if they're not doing their job, this is like the backup that comes in and does what didn't get done. Like, uh, we, we want the secondary chiefs to do, this is what I'd like to see the secondary chiefs do, make sure that they have done their part on the human resource level, meaning they've set up a method that's going to make money and that it's clear. They've set up and have a good, clear understanding on how the banking should go. They have a fair understanding, gotten in touch with the uh, uh, State Department, which they have the numbers on that, and the Justice Department, which all of these people were supposed to get letters. I only got one so far, you saw it. Um, the Justice Department. Uh, the reestablishment through uh, the uh, finalization of the paperwork, making sure that that's done properly. <coughs> got an idea that and that should be listed in this uh, in this paperwork concerning it. and if not we're going to go over it again and make sure that that is done so we need somebody from here that has uh, an understanding of administrative duties because the administrative people would be dealing with government Reestablishment and establishment with relations to the government, state, city, and and so on, according to their capability to, to deal with that. Um, we need uh, another group that would be more based around the levels of botany, uh, anthropology, uh, and the ecological understanding, because the ecology is the main focus that I have. Concerns. We also have uh, to deal with the human resource level because we have uh, one brother that wants to deal with uh, gaming, and so he's interested in a deal with the State Department around a casino. So we have to get ourselves uh, established uh, before, you know, we can even endeavor into that. And that's the purpose of this one. Now, to put the, those particular seats together. So, uh, in other words, when you fill out that application, if you're good in administrative work, you've been in there longer than three or four years, after, I mean, you've actually worked in city or state government, then that gives you an applicable method. That means you're not dealing with fear. Because years ago, I was involved as a precinct captain in uh, politics in Fourth Ward Democratic Organization. After that, I was campaign manager for a certain person in St. Louis. We got over 30,000 for an unknown straight out of high school. So with that, our capabilities were I was able to organize phone banks, PTAs, 
other uh, special interest groups amongst the old, the young, the ward organizations and the Democratic, and we used to cross over Republican stuff before white folks. You know? We used the uh, bi-party systems when Jesse Jackson was running against Mondale. We played both sides against the middle in order to come out ahead in our organizations. So uh, that's what I used to do in politics beforehand. We were tied to uh, most of the religious groups as well as all the gangs in town and in prison system. Uh, we were also tied to the uh, different politicians that we were able to gain justification from. And we were running motel systems and stuff like that <coughs> at that time. So in this particular time, we need people that would really know how to run government. And the secondary chiefs, what I want them to really focus on is just that, being able to make decisions on uh, something like uh, putting our heads together on how to create housing. And with no money at all, because we don't need the money, we just need to know how to move. And what I'm speaking of and knowing how to move, if you've got somebody downtown, you got $8 houses, then we have to go through somebody's ward politic machine in order to get those $8 houses. I know because I used to play that game. We send somebody down there that is queued in, meaning they're connected to them. What you do is you get their contractors to help you. And in using their contractors, everybody makes money, and that's the way it's done in, in, in that way. Or we go the best way we can go and don't play the game. We do the work ourselves. But sometimes you have to play, sometimes you don't, but just so that you know the rules. We set the rules when we set them, but when you don't set them, uh, then you have to play by others. These are some of the... Uh, numbers, different uh, offices that could possibly be used in developing different areas like administrative rural business cooperative. But this is going to the service department of the agriculture department in D.C. Then when we do this, we make sure that we have the, the table number. The table number is like for this one is 2H. You understand what I mean by table number? table number is like the identification number like you would use on a computer. That gets you in like you've been queued. In. Instead of you going and asking for something and you just ask in general and you don't have a number to go with or a code, then they treat you like that. And you don't get anything. You go in. Right. So I was Exactly. I was told the only way to get something up big is to have your thing set up correctly. And uh, to correctly have it set up, you have to be professional, know what you're talking about, represent it as such. You know, hit them with the papers that you uh, have, see if you can get what, what they're offering and that they gain. Because usually if they're dealing with something like us, they can gain too. They can gain recognition. Here they've got a group of people that represent one of the oldest groups in the, in the world. This particular group is in their town. I mean, a newspaper man, it's a story right there. This group isn't considered violent. Uh, they have an old history that was violent if you want to go into the Deacons for Defense and those that came from that. But the violence was in order to keep uh, the Klan from killing up everybody in that part of Louisiana, be it New Orleans, or be it Monroe, or the next county coming up, you know. Which they don't call them counties, they call the parishes. Because they definitely was parishing in the parish, you know. So, uh, this is something to think about. You got 10 minutes. <laughs> don't think too long, thought might be wrong, you know. Well, it might be right, because it's your life. 
that you're putting on, on the line of this thing. You know, that's the truth of it. Another, that, uh, the good aspects of this is you're making history and all that. The bad aspects of it is that you're claiming land that they don't want to give back. Some of this land we've actually uh, lived on and we can reach out and touch. Uh, some of this land we know from what you read we ain't going to get nowhere near. I'm dealing with the actual facts of it. I'm not one to deal with a whole bunch of foolishness. Now, some of our people believe they're going to give us 68,886 acres. they dreaming out of season. That's most of the country. Ain't nobody giving you up all that land. You know, but they will give us a certain amounts if we apply ourselves. Whoever has the most people in this affair really rules because mob always rules. So we're able to pull in close to 20 or 30,000 people. We have our thing well governed. There's no limit to what we can do. We deal with the corporate soul. And the uh, gold ray order and here, this gives us abilities to start out with fresh bank accounts as indigenous people. You are allowed an, indi an indigenous identification. You are allowed indigenous names and understandings. All of this is due to the ratification laws that the UN has been proposed and accepted. All of those nations listed that you got a chance to look at on those lists and since 1999. That's an old, that's just to let you know that this is what it is. You know what I mean? So uh, that's it. With communications uh, the department in and of itself or communications maybe with uh, uh, communications mm -hmm. would fall under two 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 or three different levels because uh, you have communications on one level that deals with, uh, in general, propaganda that would deal with uh, human resources from the level of putting out the different uh, excerpts and understandings. This would go under a category dealing with like news or productions. I haven't even thought about that. I was thinking about basic government and treasure, uh, uh, security. Uh, have to have secretaries, secretaries, because in this you need a lot of different uh, information recorded, so you need somebody to do it with a tape recorder. You need stuff recorded by pen. You need somebody to check, double check the people that are doing the, the secretarial work, because that's the key to people getting locked up in trouble. What was written and what wasn't. Uh, having the right understandings. When you deal with fraud, fraud says that you didn't do what you said you were going to do. That's all fraud is. Not being able to complete a suggested mannerism through speech, through uh, uh, sign language, however you communicate. And then conspiracy is anything known or understood. That's the easiest way for me to deal with that because I've been they wanted to accuse me of a bunch of conspiracy, but they had no case that I had the case reversed on them. Because they had a conspiracy to lock us up. They had a conspiracy to murder us. And I proved that through the sickness that I'm going through now. I'm suing them about just going through this hell. I'm not through with them at all. But I'm waiting until after this is well, well on its way. And uh, paper-wise, we're well on our way. Now, this part of it is to make sure that it's actually work. Then I can go up there and uh, tell those primary chiefs to either, you know, move them on or we can vote them out and get rid of them. You see, the votes work like that too. If somebody's permanent, but they're not living up to that point before the first four years, you see, we still have that stipulation. Within four years, you go through a, what do you call it? Um, uh, 
a trial. Yeah, I'll put it like that. I can't, I can't think of the word. Probation. 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 Probationary period. In that probationary period, you know, this, we'll do three years instead of four. Four is just too damn long. But within that three years, if you don't fit up to par, then we can vote you out. Because everything here is done through both. But when I say cut off somebody here, when you fire them, that's the same as killing them, according to the dictionary. You know, so that's what I mean by kill. I don't mean we're going to go out there and get the security people and tell them, hit these folks. Because we're not about that. First of all, our nation used to fight a lot of people, according to the way we were taught. In Louisiana, we didn't get along with half of the different Indian groups. We were killing each other real good. And uh, our basic allies were like the Seminole, the Blackfoot, the Creek, the uh, Choctaw, the Chickasaw. We used to kick tail on the Cherokee most of the time, according to what I was taught. Because most of the time, Cherokee wanted to play white, even the dark. Yeah, Cherokee had that. Except for about two or three that dealt with the languages, uh, a lot of the Cherokee would go over. And then a lot of our people kind of, you know, different ones did different things. So it's not like you can point the finger at this group or that group. Because basically all of them did the same thing. Trade each other and got gypped out of our heritage. What we had the opportunity to do right now, and you in that position, is to reclaim it at a, at a level that's higher than most of the Cherokee. Because the Cherokee are up under 501, 2 3s, 2 Cs, and any other kind of 2, and a 501 that they have, or 50, period, which means that you're managed by the government. Now, every entity is managed by the governments, but we don't have. We won't have them come and check in our books or anything like that. What they will have a right to do is check those books dealing with the affairs of their government. That's any arrangement we have with them, which would be done on a quarterly nature, usually like uh, an indigenous nation, maybe every couple years or so, because half of the laws don't apply to indigenous people. But you have to make sure you have a relation with the United States because they don't believe in support nothing, you know, uh, even if they signed the papers. Now, the Washington Nation was approved by George Bush, uh, I almost say the first. That's the way I feel about it. But uh, old man Bush, we call him Papa Bush. And we've got some paperwork that uh, every year when we usually go down to Poverty Point uh, and have our big convention, before we broke apart from each other, we would make sure we mentioned him because thanks to him and his missing uh, <laughs> the Empress, right. just thinking she was some big booted old woman bent over with some glass, two, three pairs of glasses. They thought that that was the deal and he slept on her, you know. He signed this and he signed us right on in existence. So we thank Papa Bush for signing those papers for us. And he could not change it or nothing. And every time he thinks about us, I'm sure he says, that damn bird eye shit, <laughs> you know. But we didn't have a lot of problems with them because a lot of them were trying to be the, the Washington. And probably were, because uh, when the FBI raided us, he said, well, most of the people that raided the house were Washington. I said, uh, sir, because you say it again, so I can get that off the tape. <laughs> and he didn't repeat it, you know. But uh, I didn't say that part. He knew I was taping. And uh, I just ran out. Because so. uh, dealing with the security part, I personally deal with them, and then they won't be dealing with nobody but, but uh, myself and uh, their self. And, uh, Chiefs, according to if they have any problems, then they can go and deal with that. The security, uh, what I want the security to be is real security. So I want to make sure that uh, we apply the number and then we make sure they get the real training. Training similar to what I got in security training beyond that, where when they go over to the UN, they train by the United Nations security people, who are usually from different nations. And they have programs that help you with your uh, security. 
like uh, you might have somebody that you do have a lot of options. You're not as secure. You don't have to worry about it no more because it's not your affair. But when we dealt with security, nobody dealt with us. Now, I didn't deal with anybody in that way. That they didn't discuss. I didn't discuss security business. Just the head. That's it. Now you are the head, so you have a right to ask questions about anything that you, you know, have a problem. With. And you have to see yourself as heads, and you have to see yourself as chiefs. So whenever you deal with anything with the United Washington, your secondary chief, which is really just one step away from being primary. In other words, the secondary have most of the work. You know, the primary have the luxury right now of doing their job and not doing it. But the secondary, we're going to get it done. And then getting it done, you'll end up with probably the real power. The real power is always welded by people that do work. Anybody else? Yes. Well, those type of things, we have to establish ways to assist each other, which no, uh, this is established already by the primary chiefs. Uh, we don't want anyone, even uh, uh, like myself, to be a burden on anyone, because we went through that with the Empress, uh, where she had become almost a burden at the beginning. But the Empress was wise, because she was former mayor of like three or, two or three of those counties down there. I know of two for sure that she was mayor of Richwood and uh, Columbia. I might have got the name. Huh? Okay, yeah. And then uh, she ran Monroe. She ran Monroe. Like we were the mayors and all those people and the sheriffs, when they had problems, real problems, they come to people in the governor's office, like when they had all those cases, they were coming to her. Investigations, which I can't go into that I know about, they was coming to her. That's how I know so much about investigations, because a lot of people coming. They was the sheriff. They was the this or the that. You know what I mean? Uh, the guy that raided the house uh, was the, di the director for Winsboro was and is related to the Empress through his wife. His wife is her cousin. So it's like that type of family thing down there. Half of the people are related. Uh, even the white ones, uh, they're not really white. They look white. So, you know, all they have and like that type of thing. So it's it's a lot of that type of racial type stuff. A lot of Lumbies. That's why when I met them Lumbies, I didn't have no problem, did I? As soon as I talked to them, I just started using my accent from down there, like that I'm talking now. And they were like, it's entirely different. They were like, yeah, I'm Lumbie. I said, well, can you tell me about what you're doing and uh, how you all really got it going? And, where your chiefs and when you meet at the powwow, you know, give me something. And they didn't have that much. They would tell me, well, we don't know that much, but it was a blue-eyed thing, uh, you know. That's what he told me. I said, well, you know that y'all all came from us. And we're the original mound builders. And they were like, wow. Because, see, if you're into that Indian thing and you hear something like the mound builders, you already know who the, the mound builders are. D <laughs> so you like, oh man, I heard about them down there in old New Orleans, you know, and so they start drawing off of that, you know, and then they understand. I said, yeah, we got some Paso Blancs in the family, so we are, and then so I said, Paso Blancs in the family, they change. They really become supportive, because Paso Blanc, you know what that means in French, that just means pass for white. You know, I said a nonchalant way so they understand, you know, it's like that. No smiling, no feeling at all, but a feeling when they get the picture. And so even if they're clansmen, they want to learn more because uh, a lot of those people uh, secretly support us down in Louisiana. 
but they secretly support us. They supported Queen Mother Moore. They supported Marcus Garvey. They support them because they distinctly didn't want to mix. I myself didn't either, but the Empress told me never to say that publicly. Because by being indigenous, we welcome all groups. And by being the first indigenous people, we have to welcome all groups because all groups come from us. And that was what made the Lumbees feel good. Or whatever, because they don't call themselves really Lumbees. They got another name, too. Lumbee, uh, he said, he said something to me kind of like that about it. You know, I came right back, and they, they were cool after that. They were cool. I got more. They bought more from me than anybody, and then the brothers did too. You know. Because if they think they're distinctly different, let them be who they are. I'm caring about that. You shouldn't need them. Whatever a person is, we can use it to our benefit if we see the benefit. These applications will go out, and when you fill it out, if you fill it out, because you might have reservations. Somebody talking about cutting your head off. You know, I'd have reservations. You know? And you're not a part of this, you just watch. So, you know, if, if you, know, you think that you have indigenous blood, because you like, this is a whole different thing from time from what we're talking about. Yeah, it is. But anyway, uh, uh, give it thought. You know, give it thought. Jump in the nuts. Because I have been studying this stuff all my life, so when I got the opportunity, I jumped right on it. Opportunity took me all the way to this title I got now. And don't tell them where we're going from there. You know what I mean? Because what I like to see is the unification of all of the indigenous groups. And that's the main reason I came in, to get my health together to start it off. Once it gets started, shoot, there's no telling where these children might take this thing. Because once they come up in this type of thing, then they'll be able to grasp it from the level of understanding. It's got a little bougie uh, uh, click to it because it's dealing with royalty and it's dealing with leadership on that level. But not to the point of being bougie enough to uh, misuse people for our benefit so we can be seen riding in roles and stuff like that. But if somebody gives us a role, just like the interest said, we'll take it. But we're not going to take our money buy no stuff like that. I wouldn't suggest it. I would suggest buy uh, farming tools, trucks, we need boats, because um, this world is changing. And in it changing, uh, those ice caps have, are melting. And uh, with that, we need an ocean line to survive what's coming on that level. And that's coming, and most people are sleeping on it. But you need something as big as an ocean line or at least a, a, a frig. And if you know what, I've never been in service, but a frig is a big, 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 big ship. And they usually turn frigs into ocean liners when they go commercial. So we need to look at stuff like that. We definitely need to look at donations on those levels because we can get anything from cars to houses. Uh, and then set up that property according. I'm more interested in property away from the city because the vibration is not only better, but you have the ability to raise livestock and your families without being around the hoodlum influences of the city, which are being set up now to destroy uh, even the Europeans. I'll put it like that. They don't care about our little Europeans now. You see them with their pads hanging down on their knees. And this is our method to set the little brothers up for jail and all kind of uh, uh, low life stuff that they're perpetuating on us uh, through song, dance, flip and flop. And we just don't need it. And so that's where I am. And so we want to make sure that even the councils, because the chiefs can set up councils 
within this thing as well. So as we get other people, we'll put them to work around making sure that we have social uh, arenas that would keep us from having the, you know, the youth from being just on that page. But at the same time, not looking down or putting down other people that might be there. Because we want our children to know things like everything from the opera to uh, African ballet to every culture that exists on the earth we should know about. We should have uh, materials on things from everywhere. Because by being indigenous, we have an ancient history and a pri progressive history. And that progressive history comes from those things that digress from us and became the things that exist now. So we need uh, uh, somebody that would definitely deal with historical and uh, anthropology and all of those different levels. We got to have that. We need uh, a chief that has much experience in the sciences. I wish I could pull my younger brother because uh, he's got some programs going in St. Louis that are excellent for teaching a gifted youth. But I think right here amongst the chiefs that we have, we have everything we need. You know, as I came here, I couldn't believe it. I said, damn, it's already, they already there. They ain't got to find nobody. And, you know, I didn't say nothing. <laughs> And I said, daggone, you got a whole group of people already there. You know? Educated pretty well. Have some understanding of life. Um, have direction. So with that, you can really put together whatever you want in life. If you have direction, you've uh, come through some type of training where you've uh, taken orders, then you know how to accept and give them. Because if you never take an audience, that's just damn impossible because you won't know how to conceive how the other guys think because you've never been the other guy, you know, on either level. And so all that's a responsibility that the chiefs have too. Uh, socially knowing how to handle people without having to handle them, meaning have enough care to look at what this person is thinking so as not to cause a reason for a dispute or whatever. So it's, uh, we'll go through a lot of stuff around that later. Well, it should go well. You know. What you think? And uh, other indigenous people, like the people that you know down in these other parts, we can meet with them and talk with them about basic stuff, like basic history. And some of this history I'm not going with for the United Washita, and the rest of the United Washita know this cross country because a lot of it's too religious and it's tied to too many religious people. We don't have to worry about the government because the government knows about us. They really know about me. And so I wouldn't worry about them doing anything to us as long as we don't go out and buy like a box of uh, machine guns or two, three boxes of hand grenades and missile launchers. Then they would worry because they know I would use it without doubt. And using it against them would be like an ant running up against you or I any day of the week. <laughs> I mean, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> you know what I mean? That'd be like killing your dang on people. I used to tell some uh, brothers that. I said, we have to be sensible enough, even if you're running a gang, to know where the line is drawn. Now, you just messed up. I remember when them generals brought all the weapons up there in Chicago was accused of it because I heard about it on the news. And when they put it on the news, they had General so-and-so, you know, Jeff Fort's calling from prison. And they got all this on the news, and people don't even see this. And they're playing a game, you know. And the game is we have control of this one through this one that's doing this to this one, and they made the money off of it all the way around. They made the money off the phone call with Jeff. 
They made the money off of the intercessors, the uh, uh, people that interceded. They got paid to intercede, to get him, to call the general, to give himself up so that the, the uh, bondsmen and, you know, the whole process could get to work. You know, the turnkey, the man that mopped the floor, the man that keeps the, the, the bacon, you know, everybody that's cooking. That's how it goes in this country. And if we know that, then we'll be wise enough. Stay out of that, you know. <coughs> and, uh, some of those people will come around and say, well, we'd like you to do this or that. <coughs> we really practice, so if I ever really get into the practice and I come and say that you've been accused of such and such, like espionage, I mean, we just caught you. and <laughs> Just go willingly. You were just caught. <laughs> so I know that they will do that occasionally. And we don't want that in the core groups at all, you know. We just don't want that. If they there, we got them there already, you know. Because I've been around a whole bunch of CIA agents when I was down there. They used to come through all the time. And uh, FBI, we didn't find out they were FBI agents to way later. And they used to work with us. Didn't even know this girl was FBI agent till two years ago. And she worked security with me for a long time, different projects. So those type of people uh, you'll run into occasionally, but it's no big deal. It just comes with territory, you know. So I understand that too. And uh, once you go up under this indigenous stuff, uh, if we do it right, and I believe we will, man, there'll be people from all over the world trying to get next to us. Because that's what happened with the Empress. And we have to be wise in decisions because, like, some Chinese might come wanting to cut a deal, offering money for things that we might not be able to offer. So we don't need to try to offer nothing we can't. You know what I mean? And we don't need to offer nothing to people that don't primarily aren't dealing with indigenous fairs or promoting indigenous or aboriginal people. Because a lot of that will pop up. A lot of money scams are going to come out of nowhere. A lot of money scams. So you have to be very wise. You know, one man wanted to pay $38,000 uh, to become a chief. So he's trying to cheat right away. And uh, he tried to buy a passport from um, a man that used to work for the Empress. Oh, wanted him to get a U.S. passport. Now, shit, he, what you going to him to get a U.S. passport for? But you see the game right there. And this was spoken over international lines. This guy was in Switzerland talking to somebody else in Switzerland, talking to somebody in Atlanta. So you see that there. That's a conspiracy. It's two or more people involved, too, which gives you more time because you get a uh, more charge according to the involvement. I mean, they do this stuff in degrees. So, you know, you have to be wise. Somebody might offer you some bonds from Russia or something. Say they want you to move them or see if you can. Can you handle this? They might think you're pretty smart and you think you get away with it. You might be able to get away with it first time. But then once they give it to you, you hook, meaning they got you because they can use that, and that would be considered espionage. And selling another country's bonds, unless you're an agent for that country or some go-between. And most countries don't allow uh, people who aren't bonded in that particular type of thing to deal with that. So you come up under, like, when I was going to bring gold in the country one time, they didn't have no bonds. So that's called what when you bring stuff in um, what do you call it? Uh, no, but uh, you're dealing with gold, jewelry. It's no, it's called something else. It's uh, another word for it. Do it for you and uh -uh. um, What do you call it when you got something that you're not supposed to have? Contraband. 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 It's that thing. Oh. It's contraband, and then. Uh, when you have uh, a certain amount of, uh, of it, then it has, uh, it's called smuggling. 
So smuggling puts you in a federal bracket way up there. You know, you're talking about 100 years to life. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's true. If you know the law, so I used to know them. That's why I said I've never been in front of a judge in my life, except ones that I know. <laughs> you know, how you doing, <laughs> judge? <laughs> that was it. I haven't been or I'm there with somebody else in the courtroom. And that's it. Showing them how to walk through that mess. So, where are we at? Feedback time. I think one good thing would definitely uh, be to somehow collect what you would consider to be pertinent information on the articles yeah. and the laws so that we all become as familiar as we can with uh, the, 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 the laws and the national right. rights laws, uh, human rights laws and all that. The biggest thing for us on that is this, and I said it in the beginning. I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, everybody here needs a copy of the Human Rights Acts because all laws are acts when they're in action. That's constitutional acts. That's why um, in some organizations they list them as acts because that means this thing is not, it's in progress. And that's uh, everything like they say is like a stage. In reality, this world is run just like that, a stage. And every human being is playing a part according to the roles and the rules that dictate that. So with that, everybody needs exactly what you hold in mind. And this can be drawn off of the internet. But we could also just take mine. This one is nice and uh, make copies. When I went to uh, South Carolina, they pulled this one up off the internet because mine was getting ragged. And they just re redid it, put it together. This has got all the laws that we are up under as United Washita and Washita. You notice that the Yamasee are riding real hard off of the Washita stuff. So I want to make sure that when we do things, like they have a thing coming up for Dr. York's birthday down there. So I'd like us to go, or at least some of our representatives from here to go. And then I've asked them to come here. So whenever I ask them to come here, they'll be here from the, from them, that group. Because that's part of the treaty. And I want to make sure that I enforce the treaties. And enforcing the treaties is if you say that you're going to do whatever with us, you do it. I don't care if it's, we're going to spend 50 cents, meaning the record, for a week. I want to do that, you know. So uh, it says plainly what the agreements are. We'll make sure we get good agreements like this. Like Tiara Eel is tied in through, um, through them. If you read it slow, you'll see her name on it. Because I didn't read it slow. I didn't see it till they showed it to me here the other day. So uh, we'll pull up the rest of these folks, 10 to 1. And uh, through that we'll be able to do bigger things. But right now, we need to start establishing the smaller ones. And that's go to the mounds, find the mounds here, locate them, do the rituals. Go, we've already established a little area uh, where we're doing this uh, thing with the uh, Machesidic Order. And when we do a healing session around that, and I'm switching from this, to that, we can go to the first spot and see, we'll get like Geronimo's uh, been a priest before anyway, so we need in that organization people that's been peace, priests before to, that's a one way to excel themselves as well and being able to introduce the spot and stuff like that and this happened here and then when we bring these people in, because the spot is already done, and there's certain things that uh, all the rest of you have to learn how to draw so that you can be able to pull them same energies up that I pull up, because I had somebody accuse me of that. They did the meditation by with another group without me, and they said, we didn't get the same effect. <laughs> we know that happened. That happened when you was there. You did some special hoodoo stuff that he didn't give us. I said, no. 
I, I did the whole exercise, and you probably cheated. <laughs> you know, they probably didn't do it. But in that, there are certain ways you do certain things. And when you do it consciously in that environment, everybody here is not that, so I'm not going into it in detail. But most of you know by now, saw what we were doing, because I showed you. Did it slow enough and told you. If I didn't, we'll go into that, you know, a little bit. But not now, because uh, we got people that aren't missions. And we'd be breaking the law of all those that took the step, you know. So, uh, you know, if you ever want to come into that, we have that too. Uh, but priesthood is something you just take your time with too. All this type of stuff, you take your time and make sure you want to really go into it, you know. Because you're dealing with... Uh, historically changing a lot of thoughts that you might have had before. But we don't believe that we came here on the good ship, lollipop, Jesus, or otherwise. We believe that our ancestors were already here. And by our ancestors already being here, then we have a Bible history to this land mass. Having that Bible history to that land mass, this land mass, we believe that we should be remembered. In that remembrance, that gives us a job in itself of restoring that memory. The same way Italians restore the memory of us in Italy. They'll come over here and do studies on the indigenous people from the Americas and then run back to Italy with their discovery. <laughs> you know, when you go to an Italian museum and you'll see pictures of the Incas, these people came from us. You'll see pictures of the Olmecs, these people came from us. You'll see pictures of the Toltecs, pictures of the Shoshone. These people came from us. You know what I mean? They have bodies. They have a brother from Africa stuffed in France. These people came from us. You see, our family doesn't just stop here. It goes around to the four centers of the world because we all went to four different stations. And when those sons and daughters went to those stations and their children developed in those stations, that's when those aboriginal families struck out as those original families. And then later they had other children and then those became the people written up in the books called Bible, Quran, uh, books of laws by Confucius and all the other remembrances of structured society. Where we at? Because I'm tired of talking. Okay, well. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess the question is, does everybody have a Taking, paper taking what's in the, the past papers and transcripts into something that we can use for ourselves. Yeah. Maybe you're not in Washington, instead of wherever it came from, so we you know what we need to focus on. Right. Or what it's just pertains to us, because when you have a lot of stuff to go through, a lot of people are not going to go through. But if you can fit it on, you know. We'll, we'll do it. We, we already started. I got okay. some stuff. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. This just one. And plus, um, Arrow. Nothing wrong with yeah. any question. Arrow also she has um, um, a lot of the information. I'm already um, on this. Which that it'd probably be easier to do it from the disc as far as just take away what we don't need. Oh, okay, so you got it on Word? Because uh, uh, I don't know dealing with that. If you just have it on just certain formats, you'll be on there, but you can't cut it and paste. Right. Well, yeah, what I'm doing is I'm um, actually copied a lot of the information and just uh, transferring it to a PDF document. Okay. So that way, anybody who's got like Adobe Acrobat or something, you can. Yeah, because when you're a PDF, you yeah. can't, you can't uh, cut right. and paste. Right. So they can't cut and paste or whatever, but you, but you can still view it. Yeah. They print it out as a regular page, just the way it appears. Okay. So what I've done is I've scanned much of the paperwork that Brother Name already had. Yeah. Uh, it'd probably be a good idea to get some more of the, the yeah. pertinent stuff too, mm -hmm. especially yeah. the um, human rights. But, laws but eventually, but, it don't have to be right now. But like you said, instead of have a PDF and people go through that, pick out what we need right. and start making it to our right. pamphlet. Right.
and you can always, usually in a PDF, you can, I think you can transfer it back to a Word document. Because Adobe does have a, a way where you can transfer it right in Microsoft Word to a PDF document. So I, I'm quite sure you can do it the other way around so you can make whatever changes you have to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? If not, then uh, I want everybody to rise. Okay, we'll forever rise and give pure and perfect praises to the ancestors and. Um, High honors to the Emperor of the Ghost Ghosts in El Bay, all those emperors before the royal seats, the chiefs, all things pertaining to the United Washington D.W. Monument and the Empire D.W. Monument, to the Regent Joe um, uh, Washington Turner El Bay, and all those others uh, that were uh, here before and after. Uh, all meetings should begin and end promptly. So we'll end this meeting with the uh, official words for the United Washita, understanding and congratulating all you Lords of Lights that have uh, reclaimed your understanding as Lord of Light, which is a haete. I yeah. greet you, a haete. Yeah. Ish. Ish. And uh, that's it. Um, just let me know which one you think is pertinent right. to try and get the information and maybe we can put together a little, a little paper or a book or this or something. That's what we got to do. We have to sit down right. and put all of this together right. that we're going to use. So Peru, your, uh, Uruguay, mm -hmm. and places like that. And if you look at the peninsulas, you, what you see is a mirror of the same thing. Yeah, because when you see where it, it fit. So during the Pangea, so during the time when Pangea, mm -hmm. all, where all the continents were together. When the continents was together, that's when the whole thing was one. Right. And that's before the split. That's right. why in Puerto Rico they have one drum that's entirely different from any drum anywhere else in the world. The tambourine looks like it, but it's a drum. It's played with your hand. In the old Puerto Rico, this is all they play. But most people ain't never seen the picture of old Puerto Rico. Everybody's cis color and about, well, I guess I'm red brown now. I've been in that sun, so I should be all more black from being in the sun. See, they the dark. Area. There wasn't no light skin Puerto Rican. See, this is the hmm. you're talking about Tanzania. I thought Puerto Ricans were white looking. looking. No. no. That's the new breed. Yeah. Yeah. Since oh, World no, War II. No, 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 no,
Yeah. Yeah. That's right. No wonder there's yeah. such a high population of black people in Brazil and South Africa, uh, South America, and particularly the northern part, because it was cooked off this way. Because yeah. 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 they were already black. So, so, so we're not we're not giving you a whole bunch of bull. Yeah. I mean, there it is. Look at right. it. What does that say? Okay, this is me. Uh, so it's almost ready. It ain't ready, so we can still uh, just off the top. So when you look at our people, our people have a mixture of colors. We come in every shape, every type of hair. The, the so-called black Indians, I wish we could show that tape up there. Because on that tape with them Indians, we got to make sure it's showable. And it won't jam your thing, because the FBI messed with that tape. Because they messed with a bunch of them down there. Some of them, they would uh, take and tape other stuff over. Like we had three tapes that were taped over. They put stuff on it like uh, My Heart of War has uh, a, a, a tennis game on it. Because they're showing us that we could, they could come in the house anytime. But I feel like this, and they know how I feel personally. So what? You knew nobody was at home. You watched the house. You timed it perfectly. Came in. No big deal. If somebody was there and we have our paperwork right and we have our legal thing right, we can kill you in the house. And they know that. Mm. That's why when they raided the house, they brought 85 men, what you call it, and all that, because we have the right, according to the Human Rights Act, to shoot, to kill, in order to protect ourselves, and call the sheriff and let them know. Mm. A man broke in, had no idea who he was, he has an FBI back. We need to deal with this, sir. He scared the women and the children. And we put them somewhere else. And we can deal with this any way you want to deal with it. It has to be dealt with now, sir. Mm -hmm. When we used to come to town, I called them up as soon as I got there. Sir, someone came into the house, left the path. And somebody called and said it belonged to the sheriff department. Does it belong to you, sir? No, we weren't allowed on the property. I'd like you to make a note of that, please. Because I know this conversation is being taped. So as it's being taped, I like a note attached to it that your agency didn't create this. They still have a law where no agency can imitate another agency. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, they, 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 according to their charters, they have to present themselves as is unless they're undercover. And in an actual action, you ain't undercover. Isn't that right? So I know my stuff. You know, you can't engage me if I ain't got, if he's on guard and he ain't got a gun on, you can't engage him with a gunfire because he's not on. He's not representing a threat. You know, and they knew, I knew that because I said I didn't have a damn standing force here. So you broke the Vienna, the damn, uh, 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 all of the damn, uh, uh, what's that other thing? Geneva. Vienna was before Geneva. Vienna goes back to Napoleon. So, I mean, when we deal with this stuff, you're dealing with history and knowing that this stuff goes back to wars that were created by conspirators who wanted to rule the world. Napoleon was a conqueror. Rules was made up for Napoleon because Napoleon would be breaking all of them. Napoleon would make a treaty with you. The purpose of a treaty is for us to get along in peace mm -hmm. and with integrity right. around issues dealing with commerce, trade, uh, import, export, and transitional periods in and out of countries. In other words, some writ or transfer or paper that states I'm coming to your land. They know we know this shit like, because mm -hmm. that's the way the old lady taught us. Now, you could tell people that wasn't around her, because she used to think I didn't even listen. She'd tell me J.E. and E. and them was the smart people. I said, I don't know who the hell J.E. is. As far as I'm concerned, he could be CIA like some of these other ones. You know what I mean? Because he'd go to jail and get out too damn fast. When I got out of jail, I was part of the system. Meaning I was hooked into the system so deep that if I went to jail, they got me out of my reconnaissance, even if it was I had blackjacked a cop in his head. He was charging. Mm. If I had hit him in the head with a pistol, you know, it, the mayor's it, uh, sister it, called, it, in a certain it, it, state, I was out. Mm. When I went and got my notary seal, I was sitting with the damn Secretary of State. The fat Irishman up in Jeff City, Missouri. Yeah, well, yeah that's where I was. Wearing a green silk suit. On St. Patrick's. I didn't care. I knew Carl was going to come back. So 
when you're dealing with politics, it's good to flow with what you're flowing with. It's important. And when you have the basic understanding of the law, the law works for you instead of on you. That's why they have the RACO Act, the uh, uh, new security laws. The security laws that deal with investment, banking, and the, uh, the handling of money, more so than even the expenditures of it. Because any human being now is supposed to have, this is what I learned when I was down there with the ministers. You can't have on your person over hundred dollars legally, according to the new statute in America. Over a hundred dollar bill, you need to be explained. If you're stopped with over five hundred, you uh, co uh, scrutiny is applied to you, and over a grand, they're looking at you really tight. Ten thousand dollars is illegal now to have, unless you are some type of entity or something like that meaning a savings and loan, a bank, or an entity, or a type of people that handles their own currencies as their form of banking or whatever. And then even with that, you have to have a special permit or get an understanding with the Justice Department or the Department of the Interior when it's dealing with affairs of indigenous. Let's start this meeting. Can you, uh, uh, I can't read that. You're writing too fancy. I have to listen. Can we get it typed up, I'll read it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll read it and bring my cell phone. Can you read it? I don't know. Jerome is a beautiful reader. I don't but, know if uh, you can understand that fancy. I'll give it a try, but uh, I'm trying to read it right here. Everybody fancy. Knows. I don't see fancy. fancy. I, I think it, well, it's yeah. just, uh, yes, it is to me. Sherman comes uh, forth and begins. Okay, comes forth and begins. We, uh, I'll read it. Yeah, I'll read it myself. Okay, um, the chairman will be reading this from now on. And what we're going to do is this. When we have an official meeting or when we have uh, people that are dealing with this, we'll start off officially with uh, We Rise, meaning We Rise, He's going to Rise, giving high praises to the lords of all the world. Court can quasi quota. Ahau, Ate. Ahau representing the lords of the light. Ate representing light. We'll repeat it again, Ahau, Ate. High honors to the Empress of Mu. Empress of Mu being those ones that came at the beginning of the time that we're expressing as indigenous people of North and South America. The temples of the moon and the temples of the sun. Ahau, Ate. The Dowager Queen. Kapiolani. Dowager Queen Kapiolani looks just like you. And the Dowager Queen Kapiolani was the queen that united all of Hawaii after Kamehameha. Ahai Ete. Yeah. Then we go on to the last empress of Mu, the empire, Washita D.W. Demani, which is the empress very Ghostin Elbeck. Ahai Ete. We honor you, the members and seekers of this undertaking that we are living relics, living ancestors, the living gods. We take this time to bring forth the principal in this, le in this leadership, the counselor, the prince of the Royal House of the United Washita, D.W. Demani, Ahaite. We stand forth before the Tupac Montezuma and the present prince, Ahaite. The, the 12 chiefs, Ahaite. The 12 other chiefs, Ahaite. We rise giving pure and perfect praises, a high take. We the foremost, the present and the omni, the science in the pattern of this, a high take. So, from then on, that's the way I'm going to do it. Because in that, we'll build the people into almost a frenzy. It's done properly. Mm. And then each, because you can feel that a little bit, I hope. And the purpose of this is to build you up. You know, and to captivate and to capture you back to where you can feel mm -hmm. that that phoenix that we're demonstrating and dealing with is a reality. Because the phoenix represents a dead.